Hi, I'm Adam Abraham for President Water. If you're a farmer, what would life be like for you if you go an entire season without any rain? I dare say probably it'd be a problem. You might be able to get away with it if you got some groundwater. However, farmers, all farmers I've talked to and they acknowledge that it's the rainwater that actually causes a major and demonstrable differences in their crops as in contrast to the groundwater. Groundwater, yeah, you got to irrigate, you got to have something. But when it rains, things just happen dramatically. So what happens, what might occur if it didn't rain at all for an entire season? What difference would that make? Well, it turns out this past season, one of our customers, Arthur Cornwall, of Canterbury Plain, or in the Canterbury Plain, uh, the South Island of New Zealand, that happened. And fortunately, I'll say, because he's a happy farmer, he had vortex generators. Four of them actually, three on eight inch lines and one on a six inch line. What you're about to hear, or see rather, is a conversation that my partner Jody Spencer had with him when Jody's paid him a visit. Welcome to another little video session and today we're in sunny New Zealand on the Canterbury Plains with Arthur Cornwall. Arthur is one of the pioneers of the Vortex business in New Zealand and decided to invest in Vortex generators to see what sort of performance he could add to, to his farm in regards to I'll let Arthur explain it in a minute, but um, the savings and, and what difference it's made to, to what Arthur's doing. So, Arthur, tell us a little bit about how you found us and what got you interested in, in Vortex Water. Well, I suppose it boils down, I love information on the, the internet and YouTube. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that relates to what we're doing and sort of out of the box sort of stuff or something different and I think I came across Vortex Watering on there and there was quite a few websites and uh, one thing led to another it sort of pricked my ideas up because we use pond water for irrigation and um, I'd class it as sort of dead water that hey this might have some benefit to us with the system you know we're sort of semi-biological if you like or working that way towards it so we just saw it as probably a piece of the puzzle or like I say you know I want to get 10 ducks in a row perfection which is, we may hit it every now and then but if we can get seven or eight then just making our water um, well, more, more efficient. Yeah well like every farmer knows they much prefer the stuff that comes from down up there than than out of, out of one of these big boys because yep. the, the results speak for themselves. Yep. And like we, we were years on uh, border dike irrigation and through the heat of the summers through the 70s, 80s and 90s, um, water every 14 days, we would keep the grass green, mm -hmm. but that's we always talked about a green drought. Yep. We would never have the sort of the, the guts and the grass, if you like. So, survival, not thrival. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the nutrient value of the grass wasn't there and, um, you know, which ultimately cost us some production. So, um, so you, you've had a bit of a win. Uh, we were talking earlier, you've had a bit of a win in regards to your bricks values. Yes, uh, you, yeah. You've noticed those. So, so for the for the people watching today, uh, you want to give us a bit of a rundown. What, what's the best bricks value you've seen on the, on the, the grass that you've been growing? Well, we've we've gone to eight so far, and that we went of eight's pretty good for greens. Yeah, yeah, and uh, but we had a bit of foliar fertilizer on that prior to the ten days, and we had another paddock that was just sulfate of ammonia gone on, and that was a bricks of three. So by comparison, and both had the vortex generated water go yep. on, but we really want to get those bricks as ten plus is what we're aiming at and you know we're putting systems in place to actually achieve it. We 
are not the most scientific sort of people. It's either boom or bust. We either do the whole lot or we don't do it at all. Um, running around with a refractometer is something we do sporadically, not uh, regularly. Yep. But I think over time, you know, our whole farming system's evolving and we just watch what the cows do. If, if they go into a paddock and they, they level it like a bowling green, uh, and no dung and urine patches and all the rest and that grass is worth eating whereas we look over the fence at some of our neighbours quite clumpy they're out topping yep. um, so yeah no we think our cows are, are pretty happy they sit down early they chew their cud they make milk yep. and, and and do you have any um, comparisons as to like you know you spoke about milk solids so what would you what would you expect off your your cows milk solids wise we're only a four year conversion and the culling hasn't been all that hard and when we bought the herds there was some yeah quite rat bags rat bags in the system so that should have been in the McDonald's burger but never quite made it they're still on the place so but every animal has the potential as long as you put you know like I say if you can get eight out of ten ducks in a row that cow has the potential to do far better than what she's doing mm. when she's under stress and under pressure so the more things you can do to take that stress off her and she's happy sitting there doing what she's uh, made to do yeah. then the better off we all are so uh, every, everybody has potential but uh, and we all have negatives. Life so, has potential. Yeah yeah. It's like the water. Yep. More energy in life, more energy in the water, more energy Yep. everything does better. It's like you were saying earlier about the uh, your, your sick cow herd it's one at the moment. Yeah. Out of 700 and... Oh no, 550 cows. 550 cows. And, you know, that's that's pretty phenomenal. Yep. Right? And a low, um, low empty rate, 6.9%. So... 6.9% is amazing. Pretty sweet number. Yeah, it's, it's a great number. Uh, with rat bags. With rat well, bags, some, yeah, Not yeah. all rat bags, but some rat bags. Yeah. yeah and, so that's good. And... Really good. You know, you know, and I'm over 60 and still learning, so... I'll stop learning when I'm in a box, so... Yeah, what's, that's the way forward. You don't look 60. I'm about to turn 50, and you look as good as I do, so that's happy times. <laughs> oh, You're doing well, something right, yeah, Arthur. You don't get a body with the, like this without abusing it. So. Yeah, no, I understand that concept. Um, when you first put the devices on, what, what was the first thing you noticed? Oh, the quietness running of the pumps. Yep. Uh, we had one quite rowdy pump, and it... Uh, I don't know what percentage, but we couldn't talk in the shed when it was running, and once we put them the units on, we could talk in the shed, which was quite amazing. And we saw the amps, they were drawing sort of 32, 33 amps, went down to about 27 amps. Yep. Well, that's uh, significant power saving. Didn't yeah, it? yeah. And so over, let's say they've got a 10 year life expectancy, those units, well, they've probably got more to be honest with you. Now there's nothing that should fail on them. Um, Based on that uh, that amperage saving, would you say that the units pay for themselves just in the in the savings on electricity? Yeah, I, I haven't worked out what it relates to cost saving wise, mm -hmm. but it's got to be. Yeah. Um, and I thought I had a lifetime warranty, so. Yeah. Oh well, mate, I'd give you a lifetime <laughs> warranty, and probably the other punters that are going to watch this. Oh well, Arthur's getting a yeah. lifetime yeah. warranty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get 30 years out of it, whether it's working or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, at the, at the end of the day, I can't quantify it, but uh, dollar-wise, because I haven't sat down with the right people to sort of tell me what's what's what. But uh, I, I I wouldn't send them back. Yeah. Yeah, well, back. they come back with a money-back guarantee. <laughs> so you know that you got one year to work out whether they're working for you. And uh, and this season, well, this is the end of the second season. This is the first season in 18 years on the in the last 18 years on the Canterbury Plains where it hasn't uh, hasn't rained during summer. Usually, there's you know you get 15, 20 mils every week or two weeks, and it's been dry the whole time, right? Yep. And yep. so. Uh, you know, there's, there's a bit of a story in that too, in, in regards to, you know, you only get three and a half mils per hectare per day. You're drawing five when the pivots are on, so you've got days off, and you've noticed that it hasn't really made too much of a difference. In fact, in another video, we're gonna we're gonna dig. Um, 
I want to just explain what happened when you, you went digging, putting a new uh, power line in for a little pivot. Yeah, well, about a month, six weeks ago, we had to uh, run a line through for an infill pivot, we 200 metre pivot, and we dug down, the cable went down about 1100 deep was the trench, and we were going across a paddock and it was wet right through the profile, and I just couldn't believe that there was so much water right down there. I thought, hey, my first thought was we were over watering. And then we got to the, where the pivot had stopped and the rotor owner sort of picked up. And we'd had a couple of issues with the rotor owner and the rotor owner was sort of slightly behind the eight ball, which uh, wasn't an overly fair comparison. But we dug up dust, um, you know, 150 down. Yeah. And right to the bottom of the trench was dust. Okay. Um, it was just chalk and cheese, bang. And we thought, wow, there's something going on here. Uh, and my first thought is, oh no, how much are we over watering? We have to get in and measure it and we maybe have to recalibrate our moisture meters and we have to try and get to quantify where we're at and um, that was my first yeah. uh, subsurface look at what was going on. Yeah, like, and that's uh, possibly a, another day or two where you don't have to water per week. So there's the the savings on there's the savings on that electricity, let alone the the electricity you're saving on that that six amps that you were missing before. So, yep. you know, theoretically, y y your number might be thirty watering thirty percent less than than what you have in the past. I think that's quite quite possible. Yeah, and you know, less wear and tear on the machines. Yeah, if it's not running, you're not paying for it, right? Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, we all know there's a, there's a there's a tidal wave of servicing coming in about ten years time, yeah, yeah. isn't there, on the Canterbury Plains? Yeah. So nothing ever breaks down sitting in the shed. No, uh, <laughs> that, this so. is true. So what other things have you noticed, mate? You know, ultimately in the end of the day is improving the bottom line. You know, and helping helping nature and making farming more sustainable. Yeah. Well, I all, all I can say about that is I. I think in the not too distant future, the way <coughs> excuse me, the way things are looking, it potentially is could be an industry standard. Yep. And best practice. You know, that's what we get tossed at. Yep. Uh, and I, I think it is potentially a no brainer. Yeah. But well, I, yeah. You know, I'm a little bit biased, so you know Yeah, I realise that. Yeah, yeah, no, but um yeah, obviously it's it's uh you know, it, it's a put it about putting that energy back into you know water's a capacitor, and and it's it's a bill. It's if you put it into an environment where it's going to uh, either bring in energy, it's going if it's if the water's energyless, it needs to bring in the energy to find its balance. It's always seeking balance. But if it if it's got more energy, like rainwater does, then it's got that energy to give away. Yeah, yeah. And and that's you know that that's what that that's where the you know through the enzymes and the and the nutrients in the soil that you know that's where the plant you make it easier for the plants to um to uptake the nutrition and and the water so you know it's um you know it's like i said it, it, what we've seen is it works for every everybody and everything yeah. you know it's part of the silver bullet solution yeah well i, I think too and uh what we want to get back to and there's the old adage i've seen it time and time again is back in the 1920s you ate one apple today you've got to eat five apples to get the same nutritional value out of it. Well, I want to get back to eating that one apple again. And if this is one of the steps along the way to get back to eating that one apple, yeah. or our cows eating a more nutrient dense diet, then um, if, if that's one of the pathways we go along to do it, yeah, it's why not? Yeah. Because human health and animal health and all the rest is going to benefit from it. Yeah, and you know that that's one of the things that that we spoke about when we started the vortex generators. You know, we can help so many more people. You know, I know, you know, in, in Australia, the supermarkets only look at for pumpkins, for instance. They want pumpkins that are one to two kilos. They don't measure the bricks value of them or what they look like. They no. just want them a certain size so they're easy to sell. What they taste like or how how much nutrition is not part of the deal and and part of the part of the joy we get of you know out there talking about these devices is you know we're bringing more nutrients or making um, food whether it's for animals or people more nutritious and yeah. uh, that you know 
that's got to be got to equate to better health. Yeah. Well, we Mary bought some asparagus not so long ago, and we were eating homegrown asparagus, and uh, we actually threw the bought asparagus out because it just didn't taste anywhere near like the homegrown. I brix tested it, and they were about seven or eight points Different. difference. Yeah. So, you know, the bought stuff went in the bin. The compost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even know if the worms would eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh mate, have you got um, any recommendations? Like, would you, you know, is it something if you're starting again or you're putting a new pivot in, would, is it something that you'd automatically put in as part of what you need to do to get the job done? Yeah, I would not do it. Yeah. Um, it's just it's it's a no brainer. Is that? Well, we've got a huge investment in pivots, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of pivots. Yeah. And um, if, and further down the track, our property is going to be able to quantify it better, yep. but um, this is just as where we're at, the, at at the moment. You know, I, I'm very positive. Yeah, right. Uh, well, mate, I, I appreciate everything um, you're sharing with us, and it's been uh, it's been a great journey. It's just unfolding, so we'll see what the next 12 or 24 months bring. I'll no doubt come back and we'll do this all again. And, get a bit of an update but appreciate everything Arthur so no, uh, thank you well it's a team effort it is mate I, yeah you need us it. and we need you exactly good <laughs> on you mate uh, che thanks, cheers, mate. cheers cheers mate right if you want to know more about what and how vortex generators might benefit you in your operation Please give us a call on our toll-free number or drop us an email, info at presidentwater.com. The toll-free number is 888-777-6045. Thank you.